कर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्र पश्येक्षजत्रा स्थिंग स्तुष्टुवागुम सस्तनु व्यशेम देवितयदायु स्वस्ति न इंद्रो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति न पूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नस्ताक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शातिशा हरि ओ Dear friends, welcome back to the study of the Mundaka Upanishad. This Upanishad is supposed to be latest in point of time compared to all other Upanishads, and its language and its ideas will be very much. common to our present day understanding other upanishads are very ancient and old and archaic and the language is also different conducted by a different system of grammar therefore swami swami vivekananda ji apart from speaking about all other upanishads have chosen the mundaka upanishad to propagate its ideas as you know already and i have told you before in my previous talks mundaka means a razor and upanishad means a heaps of idea if you expose yourself to it and assimilate those ideas your ignorance about your true nature will be shaven off by a sharp razor that is the ideas emanating from the study of this upanishads they are so sharp and crisp that if you follow it if you assimilate it absorb it your personality will blossom up and you will be one with god this is the purpose of the study of all upanishads more so this one secondly by coincidence the third chapter of the bhagavad gita which we had studied a few days ago speaks about karma bhoga and karma yoga and we had been very very clear about it and we have discussed it good enough it says or it teaches you the gita how to convert by our attitude in our correction how to convert the concept of karma bhoga suffering the results of our activity egocentric with expectation we are victims of the reactions how we can continue to perform our duties in life with an attitudinal correction so that instead of this performance leading to bondage this performance will lead us to moksha mukti emancipation liberation freedom gita has explained it and it continues we are in the same area of discussion by coincidence in the study of the upanishad now i will give you a little background of what it is so that you don't find yourself lost in those days 
say, eight or ten thousand years ago, when humans in the land known as Aryavarta, the land of the Aryans, we lived there and we lived in nature, with nature, interacting and cooperating with nature. We knew if the natural elements and forces are not favorable, our existence in the planet may be difficult. So what we are told to do at that time, live in such a manner that you coordinate, cooperate with natural forces and get the best out of nature for your own prosperity. You eat, you work hard, you plow your soil, you sow your orchard, plant your orchard, you do this, you do that, and you have enough to eat. And the land was so bountiful, one crop a year was good enough to leave you another nine months of the year free of any pressing responsibility. So people had time on their hands and they used to look around the nature and try to find out what it is all about. This Upanishad comes from that age. So our way of life of today and their way of life at that time is almost diametrically opposite. We are not bothered how to improve the quality of our personality. We are bothered about how to improve the quality of my life and living pattern, creature comforts, creature convenience, what is happening to the stock market, what is happening to this, what is happening to that. What is happening to me as a best specimen of biological creature, fully evolved, doesn't appeal to us. But at that time, it was the other way around. Each and every human was given a direction, a way to live, so that living in nature, living with nature, living in coordination with nature, the human slowly and slowly educated itself to feel the hand of God everywhere. And then they evolved certain procedures and methodologies known as Yaga and Yajnas, ritualistic fire worship and offering to the fire. They learned it in such a manner that slowly and slowly their personality qualitatively evolved. And the perennial question who am I, what am I, was answered through that quest. This is what it is all about. So we are now in a section where the Upanishad having expressed everything about this way of life, Upanishad says, even then, there are people who are motivated by self-interest, selfish interest, and they would like to have all that nature can give them so that they can enjoy their life, as we call today, creature comfort. The Upanishad is now telling us that that is not fair. You are not doing justice to yourself. And not only that, 
people have the habit of preaching and teaching, knowing full well that this is what is the best to enjoy this world, they keep on preaching on their own philosophy and their ideas. Such people are being described here. What is being said? It is shloka number eight of the second chapter of the first mundaka, or serially, it is a seventeenth shloka from shloka one. Avidyayam antare vartamana svayam dhira panditam mannamana Jamhannamana parijanti mura andhe naiva niyamana jatha andha. He says, such people who are not inclined to answer this perennial question, who created this world? Who is he? I am a part and parcel of this world. Who am I? What could be the relationship between me and the creator of this universe, my creator? These are perennial questions. As long as two people walk on this earth, this question will be paramount. Who created this universe? We see in the world there is a creator who has his intelligence, who has his power, who has his will, who has his capacity to create. An artist creates, an artisan creates, an engineer creates, a lawyer creates, a doctor creates. And they are all creators with their intelligence and their the total capacity of their faculty. And they are created. Who created this cosmos? And a group of people paid wholehearted attention because they had nine months of a year to spare. Wholehearted attention towards this pursuit. And others, we even today call a group of people who are introverts and a group of people who are extroverts. The extrovert people, they are more concerned about the comforts of life and living, how to improve that and how to enjoy more and more and more. We don't blame them, let them. And there are other group of people who are known as introverts. They dive deep within themselves. And they think, I keep on saying, I am, I am, I am. Not only that, I say the world is because I am. I am experienced in this world. That is why the world is. I am, that is why the world is present to me. Who is this I am? In philosophical language, this is an internal journey, journey within myself. We are introverts and others are extroverts. They would like to probe the world as we are doing today with a world of technological advancement, see what amount of creature comforts and conveniences are available to us. But how at the cost of our inner journey, are we doing anything to improve the quality of my personality? Am I doing anything to make myself a better specimen of a human being? Am I? I am afraid I, I am, but not to the extent I should. That much we are prepared to do. 
And we don't blame the extroverts because it is indispensable improvement of quality of life and living is indispensable. So there are a group of people who are involved in that direction to improve the quality of life and living of the whole human race. And we are the beneficiaries of that. Similarly, there are a group of thinkers, we call them philosophers, we call them spiritual thinkers, spiritual scientists, because it is based on robust common sense. It is not miracle mongering, not tampering with myths. It is based on strong, infallible logic, common sense. They say, you better think of it and you expand your ego. Don't be self-centered. Think of your family. Think of your extended family. Think of your community. Think of your country, the society. Think of the whole human race, how we can live in harmony together. They are the introverts. So the introverts and the extroverts, they balance the progress of quality of human personality, making ourselves a better specimen of a human being, and quality of human life and living, which is indispensable. So let us sit, not sit on judgment that that is bad, this is right, that is good, that is wrong. No. Both of us are required. Upanishad and the Bhagavad Gita teaches you how to live in this world, how to prosper, and prosper materially, prosper spiritually. This is the excellence of Indian philosophy. Though we know Indian sannyasis and monks, they run away from the society and hills and hills, Swami Vivekananda said, those days are gone. What we need now? Listen to what Swamiji says. A world teacher, a world mover. Listen to him, what he says. Those days are gone when a human who had the prosperity to give he used to stand up and give with all his ego of being a giver. And the poor receiver used to kneel down and receive. Those days are gone. What is today? What we have to do today? Let the giver be humble enough, kneel down and give and let the receiver stand up and receive and bless the giver. How come? Because the giver has educated himself. How? By God's grace, by the society, I am what I am. I am in a position to give. How do I give? I give to the divine who is in the poor, the downtrodden, the uncared for. Let them receive from me. And as because God resides in them, let them bless me for seeing God everywhere, serving God everywhere, a karma yogi. So you see how things have been turned around now. And we belong to this age, so we must know what it is. I'll give you another quote from Swamiji to clarify the concept of karma yoga, karma bhoga, what is sannyasa, what is to see God everywhere with your wide open eyes, and how to conduct yourself with that background with you. That is your conviction. I live in God. I live with God. I live for the sake of serving God's children. That too happens by the grace of God. He says, 
those days are gone. I call him a traitor who, having been a product of this society, achieved all its wealth and power of wealth in this society, does not anything in return. He is a traitor to the society. Give with an attitude of worshipfulness, seeing the divine in the human. And that makes your life worth living. That makes your life full of ecstatic divine joy. I am interacting with my God every moment of my life. But the days when these Upanishads were written, Swamiji was not born then, but the perennial truth remained. And that perennial truth was, I would like to prosper. If you like to prosper, good enough. Interact with the forces of nature. What we call today as the ecological balance. Don't say it is today's coinage, today's world. The concept of ecological balance is to be found in the Upanishads 10,000 years ago. And that ecology had two aspects, moral and material. Ritam Satyam is a moral ecology. You have no right to hurt anybody. You have no right to ignore somebody's tears. You have to be sympathetic. You must be empathetic. You must interact with the society. How? Not a blown ego, I am the giver, but with that humility of a worshipper, I am worshipping my God. And the others, they wanted their prosperity. I will strictly follow the rules of ritualism. What is ritualism? An imposed discipline from which you have no escape. Right from the morning when you wake up till you retire, you go to bed. Your life is laid down in a well-disciplined manner. And four stages of life, Brahmacharya from 5 to 16, Grahastha, Brahmacharya is a student life, assimilation of ideas, Garastha, 16 to 50, when you are a full-blown young man, you are creative, procreative, and you are thriving for posterity, prosperity. Then you are a retired person. Don't interfere with your children's life. After 50, you go away, live in the hills and dales and forests, accompanied by your wife. There you have to perform upasana. And when you have finished that, you have seen the world through and through, you renounce everything and be a mendicant monk. Brahmacharya, Garastha, Banaprastha, Sanyasa. During the Garastha period of life, your life was guided by a series of rituals. If you perform them correctly, thoroughly, efficiently, without any slipshod manner, you create an infallible result, this being the cause. Performance of your duties of life done in a particular manner becomes the cause 
and the result is known as unseen karma phala, adrishta karma, the results of it. And those results accumulate. You keep on accumulating your bank balance. And when you are dead and gone, you are carried by the rays of the sun with great warm welcome at the doors of the heaven and you are welcomed warm in there and you enjoy the fruits of your good deed in heaven. An eternal life in paradise with your maker in heaven. That concept of eternal life in heaven got hold of human imagination. Let me lead a life as mentioned by the scriptures and I will be rewarded by an eternal life in heaven. But there is a flaw. In this argument, there is a flaw. And the Upanishad here tells you, you do not know what you are teaching and preaching. You are teaching and preaching that continue to perform the ritualistic duties of life in a manner that you do it thoroughly, correctly, perfectly, and you pray to God for the results of this performance. And that is being kept as a bank balance for you. It will be given to you when you are dead and gone, and you will enjoy eternal life in paradise. This has a tremendous hold on human being. He is in that state now. He says, avidyayam antare bartamana. Such people with such idea of eternal life in heaven, unfortunately, they do not know what they are speaking. If you create something in point of time by your efforts, which is a duration of time, the result is created by you, this being the cause. How could the effect be eternal? If it is a finite effort of a human creating certain results, how could that be eternal? As because it has been created in time, it will give you results, just like your bank balance. You don't earn any more. You don't put into the bank anything anymore. You keep on withdrawing. A time will come, it will exhaust itself. Similarly, the Sukritis, the good deeds that you have created, which has taken you to the heaven, and you enjoy in heaven. Enjoyment in heaven is drawing on your bank balance. And you are doing nothing more to increase that. Because when you are in heaven, you don't have that creativity left in you anymore. You can only enjoy. So a time will come when your bank balance is over. Shine punye martalokam vishanti. When that is totally utilized, you come back to square one again in this world to work out your own destiny. So, until and unless you know, learn, educate yourself in the secret of such a type of activity which will really give you eternal 
life in heaven. Until as you learn that this contradiction is a contradiction in ideas. I create something in point of time by my human effort and that will be everlasting. It is a contradiction in truth. It cannot happen. If it is created in time, it will stay in time and it will disappear in time. You are coming back again. So the Upanishad here explains to you, this is the background, the introduction, avidyayam antare vartamana. Those people who think that I can create by my thorough, correct, perfect, excellent performance of my duties of life, Jaga, Jagyadi, etc., etc., I will be entitled to eternal life in heaven. Created result cannot be eternal. That they do not understand. There is a lack of understanding, a darkness of understanding. The Upanishad is saying, avidyayam antare vartamana. I exist in the womb of ignorance. What is that ignorance? An eternal result, everlasting result, cannot be created by finite activity. Infinite result by finite activity is a contradiction in terms. Swayam dhira panditam mannamana and they are so, so, excuse my language, arrogant because they think they understand everything. And they keep on preaching and teaching, do this, do this, do this, you'll reach the eternal heaven. They do not know that what they are talking. They are talking something based on ignorance. Janghannamana parijanti mura andhe naiva niyamana jatana. They go through a lot of conflict and contradiction and they are absolutely ground into a page by being born over and over again and having an innings in the heaven and come back again, innings in the heaven. They are grounded into a paste. But what is the example? As if a blind man is leading a blind. He doesn't know what he's speaking, but he's speaking with authority. I know very much. Come on, listen to me. Do this and we'll go there. They are not knowing that an eternal, infinite result cannot be produced in a finite manner. This is the essence of this shloka. That is, there is something else which the Upanishad is preparing its ground for you to understand, and I hope I can reach that in due course of time today itself so that you see something positive in this study today. The same idea goes on in the ninth verse, and I'll read and explain to you. Avidyayam bahudha vartamana vayam kritartha ittavimanyante vala jat karmino na pravedanti raga tena tura the same idea in a different language. What does he say? He says, you are totally saturated with ignorance. Ignorance of what? Ignorance of reality. What is your true original nature? Answer to this perennial question, who am I? 
whatever. That is not uppermost. I am creating a bank balance so that when I'm dead and gone, I live on that bank balance and it will be eternal. How could that be eternal? It is created in point of time. It will stay for a point of time. You use it up and it exhausts itself. You come back again to square one. This is what is being said here. Now there's another group of people. See how analytical it is. There are others who say, I am not doing for myself, I'm a philanthropist. My personality is oriented towards charitable activity. I don't know anything for, I don't want anything for myself. As for instance, there's a terrible drought. Humans are dying of hunger because there's no work for them. I gather hundreds of people and I say, I'll give you my daily, your daily wages, dig a deep water tank. It's not for me, for the society. I'm a little better. I'm not personally involved. I'm involved with the society. Ishta purtam mannamana variktam nana shreyo vedante pramura nakasya prishti te shukriti onabhutti imam lokam bahimatalam pishanti. Though they are charitable, though they are philanthropical, though they are not thinking of themselves, they are thinking of the community welfare, they are thinking of social welfare, the one grade higher, not self-interested, selfish people. But their self has taken a bigger dimension. They feel for the community, they identify with the community and with their own prosperity, they help the community to earn and to create something which will help the community with indefinite supply of water. Ishtapurtham, schools and colleges and universities, carbon emission revisions, all these things are philanthropic activity. They will give you results because they're doing greater good to greater people. You will enjoy greater amenities for your good work, but as because it is being created by your effort in point of time, it will end in one day and you come back to square one again. Nakasya prishteti sukriti onuvishti, having enjoyed a long evenings in the heavens and when that when balance is over, they came back to the world. What does it mean? It means, dear, please think deeply. You are spending your life. You do not know whether you will get it back or not. If so, where, how, in what situation. Nothing is known to you. This life is a concrete, tangible thing given to you to be utilized. How do you utilize that life? <clears throat> Chasing after something which is not eternal. An Upanishad, like a mother, Upanishad is compared like a mother. Matri Sama Upanishad. She holds you by your hand and leads you to proper destination or goal of life. The Upanishad is drawing your attention to this is the life given to you, a span of time, and you as a human, you have enormous faculty and possibilities in you, and you can utilize it here. Is it wise for you to utilize in that manner? 
that you utilize it, you enjoy for a while, you come back again, and this cycle goes on over and over again. Is it worthwhile? I have an alternate suggestion for you. What is that alternate suggestion? Know thyself. This is from the Bible. Know thyself. Tattva Masi, I am Atma Brahma, Aham Brahma Atmi. These are the words. Know thyself. What is knowing thyself? I know I am a human being. Who is a human being? A human being is a biological creature. But because of the process of evolution, we are the most evolved of biological creatures. And we are bestowed with four special faculties of rationality. Instinct has matured into rationality. Emotionality, we feel, we care, we share, we sympathize, we empathize. We have ingenuity, we can do things the way we want to do. I tell you, oh, you live there. This is the road that is better for you to reach the ashrama. And you say, no, Swami, that is better for me. You have that privilege to say no to somebody and do it in your own way. That is known as human ingenuity. And this human ingenuity, love for an object, rationality with an unstoppable willpower, rationality, emotionality, ingenuity and willpower, Human is shaking the world to its foundation. That is a capacity inherent in a human. It can shake the world to its foundation. And that human is wasting this valuable time known as life in pursuing something, knowing full well logically Infinite duration is not possible by finite activity. And we are chasing it. So the Upanishads teaches you, wait a while, dears, be introspective. Parikshalokan karmachitana brahmano. People, those who have seen through this ball game. It may not be. This is the first time we are born as humans. We have gone through this cycle of birth and death over and over and over again. And because of that collective wisdom, we are here to think, is there any method where I can be eternal free be one with my Maker in heaven infinitely. Is there any way? This is what the Upanishad is stimulating to you. Please think over. Would you not like to consider there is a better way to utilize your life? Just consider whether you follow it or not, it comes later on. Make use of your brains. Whether you will consider the shloka is, this shloka number 11 I was trying to skip over, but let me quickly explain to you. When you go to Banaprastha Sadhana, after you have finished your Brahmacharya period, 5 to 60, 15, you have completed your Garastha period, the householder, the more active, most active period of your life, 16 to 50. Then 50 onwards, you have now relinquished everything given to your children. You go for retirement, hills and dales and forest. 
you live there. Your needs and your demands are minimum. The forest provides you enough fruit to live. The glacial river waters give you enough pure water to drink. Your beautiful shady nooks and corners to live comfortably and carefully. And as you don't have materials with you, which you buy with your money, you imagine in your mind that you are worshipping the divine. It transforms internally. I internally am aware of the presence of the divine and I interact with it. This is what, what a life of a Bana Prasti is, interacting with the awareness of presence of the divine. Karma Yoga teaches you to start here and now. In the Upanishads they say, wait, after you have this experience of the world, the transitory, transitoriness of the world, the instability, uncertainty of the world, you go there and you please kindly remember and interact with God internally, manasa, mentally. And you will also go to heaven thereby. But you will have to come back again. Now let us move to the positive aspect of it. So long it has been said that this is the fault, this is the fallacy of argument, that you can't create an infinite result in a finite effort. A person with a little wide awake alertness, Pariksha Lokan Karma Chitana Brahmano. Please have patience with me. I'll explain to you word by word. Parikshana means to critically analyze what karma chitan loka, the fruits that we are going to enjoy in heaven, which I have created my good by my good deeds here. I analyze it critically. Pariksha, underline the word if you have that book with you, Mundaka Upanishad. You are a critical analyzer of a situation. You are not carried away by the masses. Oh, this is it, this is it. No, no, no. Let me have time to think. God has given me my rationality, my common sense. Let me make use of that common sense. I sit and think, karma chitan and loka. Loka means destination, where I am supposed to reach. And that destination is being created by me in this lifetime. It is being created. How can created thing give infinite result? Logic doesn't approve. Common sense doesn't approve. I'll have to come back again. Nasti akrita kritena. Nirveda maya, the next line. Nasti akrita kritena. That critically analytical person, <coughs> pardon me, that critically analytical person, he has gone through that. He has done it, he has performed it. And with the experience and wisdom emanating from that, with the experience and wisdom emanating from that, he comes to this conclusion, infinite result, everlasting result, 
cannot be created by finite activity in point of time. No, it does not appeal to my logic. It does not appeal to my rationality. It does not appeal to my robust common sense. So what is his conclusion? Parikshalokan karmachitan brahmano. A person desirous of the eternal truth, the knowledge of Brahman, he analyzes that this is how I behave, I conduct, and this is what I get in return. I am creating it in point of time by my efforts. It will give me a result because cause and effort are infallibly related, but it cannot be eternal. Nirveda Maya, he is now demotivated to this way of life. Why? Akrita Kritena Nati. Nirveda Maya Nasti Akrita Kritena. By my performance, I cannot achieve that which is beyond performance, the eternal. And I am now demotivated. Nirveda means Vairagyava. I have lost all attraction to that. Pariksha Lokan Karma Chitana Brahmano Nirveda Maya. He comes to this conclusion, demotivation. He is no more attached to this theory. Nirveda Maya. Why? Because Akrita Kritena Nasti. It is never possible to achieve the infinite and eternal by finite and limited activity. But he doesn't know where to go. He has found it out and the whole world is chasing. After this, he doesn't know where to go. Then listen to the last two lines of the shloka. Tad vigyanatham, to know that thoroughly, now, jnana is knowing intellectually. Vijnana is what you are intellectually convinced and what type of conviction? Rock solid, crystal clear conviction. Not only a shaky conviction, somebody talks you out of it. No, you are now absolutely rock solid crystal clear that I cannot create the eternal by transitory means and activities. Where do I go from here? And I would like to experience that, not only retain in my skull, in my nut, I would like to feel it and be one with it, vijnana. There are two words, jnana and vijnana. Jnana is intellectual knowledge, which is a foundation of Vijnana. And what is Vijnana? Swanubhava Karanam Vijnanam. Pardon me using the Sanskrit definition of Vijnana. Swa Anubhava Karanam. As simple as that. Those who know Hindi can understand. Swa, by myself. Anubhava, I must experience it. That is Vijnana. I don't want to be an intellectual giant. I want to experience the reality behind this apparent world. That is what my intention is. Why? Because I've seen through the fallacy of this ball game of going to the heaven and coming back again. I don't want it. Tad Vijnanatham, to know that, not only know, to experience that, sa, he, gurum eva avigachin. He goes to a guru. 
अभिगछेत गच्छ धातु इज टू गो गम धातु इज टू गो गच्छेत इज टू गो इट इज बीन प्रिफिक्स विद द प्रिफिक्स ऑफ अभिगछेत ही शुड फॉलो certain rules and patterns of reaching his good hi guru could you teach me that's not the way that we say today hi professor how are you nothing like there's a way which by your body language you express your humble your modest why you should hum be humble and modest because humility and modesty through body language expresses that mental attitude of assimilation and absorption you are prepared to receive if you are sticking like a sore thumb nothing will stick there <coughs> sri ram krishna used to give an example of what is a vigatche when you go down the road or at a little in the out back you find hillocks and top boards it is raining heavily does water can stay in the top of the hill it flows down where does it collect at the lowliest of the lowly pot place and you find a water reservoir or a water tank it has to be low to hold that rain water wisdom emanating from a teacher who will teach you this subject which is so rare in the world you must approach him with due humility and modesty which is expressed in your body language thereby the guru will understand you are mentally prepared to absorb and to assimilate tad vigyanartham to know it by heart to know it by himself not only knowledge experiencing knowing and experiencing are two things we are happy with knowing knowing we are intellectuals do your transformation of the personality is a point in question you must blossom your egocentric human personality into a divine centric divine personality that is the goal of study tad vigyatham sa guru meva avigachhe avigachhe is now being explained samita pani श्रोत्रियम ब्रह्मनिष्ठम गुरु एव अभिगछे द क्वालिटीज ऑफ अ गुरु इज ऑल्सो बीइंग डिस्क्राइब वी हैव टुडे डियर गुरुज कमिंग अप लाइक मशरूम्स बट वेरी 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 फ्यू रेयर ऑफ देम फिट्स इन टू दिस डेफिनेशन ऑफ अ गुरु एंड इट विल बी फॉलोड बाय द नेक्स्ट श्लोक what does he say that student who has developed that critical analysis of this form of life karma kanda or yaga yagya bhavana and etc etc or purva vimamsha these are the technical words having analyzed it critically he has found out the flaw in the argumentation eternal heaven it is so attractive your faculty of reasoning is blinded by the suggestion eternal heaven can it be eternal by transitory activity no intelligent man no man with robust common sense no human with a robust common sense will agree that you have eternal result out of finite activity it is a contradiction in terms so he has seen that so he doesn't know if this is not what i want to spend my life on 
where do I go? I've seen through the fallacy of this ball game. I've seen it through. But where do I go from here? Who leads me? Who guides me? Who teaches me? The only way left for him, he must find out a person who is Shrotriyam Brahmanishtam Guru. Shrotriyam means who has mastered the Shrutis or the Upanishads, not intellectually, but by experiencing and realizing. Shrotriya means Shruti is the Upanishads. The essence of the Shruti has been totally assimilated by that person. He is known as Shrotriya. It's a qualification of the Guru. He must be a realized soul. No excuse. Tad vikyartam sa guru me babi gachet, avi gachet. With that language, body language. That body language is being determined. Samita pami. With a handful of offering. And now, it is not the price of the offer. How many thousands? No. It is the quality of your heart. If you don't have anything to offer, keep his home fire burning. Carry a handful of twigs and small branches so that his home fire is burning. Summit is fuel. Look at that. Can you imagine a person who is critical, who has analyzed, who has seen through the ball game? He now asks the Upanishads, where do I go? I have seen through this fallacy. Where do I go? How to find one? He tells him, Guru is composed of two words, Gu and Ru. Means a person who will remove the ignorance from your eyes. Eyes is a symbol. He will help you to remove the ignorance of your true original nature. I am Atma Brahma, Aham Brahma, ask me. I am that. I am one with my God. He is a Guru. So you see now, nothing is left to your imagination so that you can make a mistake. First, be critical about this philosophy of eternal life in Swarga. Akshaya Swaradabhata, eternal life in heaven. It will only happen when you know your true original nature. Answer to this pertinent question, who am I, what am I? You reach that Guru. Samitopani with an offering. That offering is a symbol of your modesty, your humility, and that modesty and humility is suggestive of your capacity to assimilate and to absorb. The next shloka ends this chapter, and I would rather take a little time of yours to finish that then it will be complete. This is what you and me should do to ourselves to reach a person who is worthy of his name as a guru and he is ensconced, established in the awareness of his own excellence, magnificence, majesty, the soul. Now the Guru is being advised, he cannot run away. 
if such a person approaches him, Guru has no right to run away from the responsibility of taking up the responsibility of helping the student to get rid of the ignorance of his own true original nature. Let us read the sloka. Tasmai Savidyan Upasanyaya Samyak Prashanta Chittaya Jitanitaya Samanitaya Jena Aksharam Purusha Veda Satyam Prabhachatam Tattato Brahma Vidyam. What does it mean? It means Tasmai Savidyan Upasanyaya Samya. Upasanya means who has just arrived. The student desirous to know, desirous to learn, desirous to be taught. When he has come, Tasmai Savidyan Upasanyaya Samya. In a correct as possible, well laid disciplined manner. You approach your Guru. What is your qualification? That you qualify to be his student? Prashanta Chittaya Samanritaya. You should be Prashanta Chitta Samanritaha. What is Prashanta Chitta? Prashanti here means equanimity, tranquility, poise. Equanimity, tranquility, poise. Prashanti. That means you are not excited. You are so cool. You are so collected that not a single word from your Guru's teaching escapes your attention. We are always so excited, we don't understand what is what. We shouldn't be so. We should be cool, calm, poised, tranquil, so that I am totally absorbent. Tasmai Savidyan Upasanya Samya Prashanta Chitta, his personality is absolutely poised, tranquil, no emotional up and down. Tranquility, equanimity, poise. Samanitaya, all his self organs are under his control. He is a man well disciplined and has total control on his faculties. A young man. Such a person, if he reaches a guru, jena aksharam purusham veda satyam. Jena, by means of which that immutable reality known as Brahman is experienced by the student. Tam Tattato Pravacha Brahma Vidya. This is a must on the Guru. You can't take that student lightly. A Guru has to be serious enough to accept that young man and to teach him about that immutable reality, the eternal truth, in such a manner, tattvata pravacha. Tattvata means essentially correct according to the teachings of the scripture, not a man-made fancy. He must follow a practice. Pravacha, prakrishta rupena uvacha. Ubhacha means to say, <coughs> to transfer 
his ideas to the student by proper selection of correct words. Proper selection of correct words, he must transfer that means of acquisition of wisdom by means of which he acquires that wisdom. This is a must for the Guru. That is a must for the student. This is a must for the teacher. Nobody is spared. So let me read it and conclude it, and I have detained you longer than required. Tasmai Savidya, that type of a person desirous to know, Vidwan, Upasanyaya Sammat, he reaches in the correctest possible disciplined manner to that teacher. How does he reach? with equanimity, poise, and tranquility, and his all his faculties, the sense organs and its activities, totally under his control. This is the essential qualification of the student. And what is the compulsion on the teacher? Jena, by means of it, a continuing process. Yena tat aksharam satyam, that immutable reality, truth, the Atman, the Brahman, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit, the Ru, the Alaknirandyam, the Sunyam, the Torah, call it by any name. Aksharam satyam. Tam tat tatu prabhaja brahma vidya. You have to continuously help him till he realizes that goal. What is that realization? Swa Anubhava Karanam. I say I am. I am that the divine. Up till then, the Guru continues to help. With this, the second chapter of the first Mundaka comes to an end. And it will follow. We have completed 22 shlokas. There are 64 shlokas of this Upanishad. Every Saturday, Sydney time, 11. 11. Every Saturday, Sydney time, 11, on the website, you will find this talk on the Upanishad being given to the website. It Swami Dhanyanandaji gets it serially numbered and he passes it in the website. You can continue to listen to that if you are interested. Thank you, dears. Pardon me for delaying you for long. Thank you. Let us say our prayers. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur